Have you guys ever heard of TS Reset? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you think about this? For, well, I mean, could you explain it, like in your mind, what what it is or the problem that it solves? Um, I think the standard library is a the DTS for the standard library is a collection of several thousand judgment calls. <laughs> um, <laughs> And TS Reset identifies, I think, the most common uh, judgment calls where people most often disagree and uh, flips them to the other one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I support yeah. the aims of the project. I think it's a, a smart idea. Um, I haven't personally tried it out, um, but um, yeah. It seems, like, it seems like a common thing that people often run into when, when you're really, when you're really enthusiastic about TypeScript, which like the core team is too, right? Mm -hmm. um, sure. And we, we've wanted to make some of the fixes that TS Reset does, but the standard library is, and I say standard library, I mean like the, the declaration files that we ship for, you know, the built-in for ECMAScript, the DOM, uh, whatever, right? Uh, when we try to change those, that is harder to do based on like what you think strict... <laughs> What, what 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 the straight flag should do, right? So when it comes to like what the type system actually does, there are some little things that we can do when you say, okay, I want strict blah, strict bind call apply. Like we can type those more strictly. We look at a different type for those methods, something like that, right? Can you are we gonna come up with a new strict flag for whatever JSON.parse comes out with? Like all of those needed their own strict flags. And so yeah. and then sometimes it's not even like necessarily better consistently because you, you like there's a trade-off of oh well inference doesn't work here anymore and so mm -hmm. um i think it's really cool that based on the changes that we made a couple of years ago like one or two years ago to allow external versions of the of the libdts i guess you technically always could have done this right mm -hmm. but it's easier now it's a lot easier now yeah you just need a side yeah. effect import and then you're good to go one place in your app Oh, that, that's what that is. Okay, I thought it was more like, because um, you can redirect the standard library today with tsconfig, but that, okay, apart from yeah. that. This actually, I thought this was, it's interesting that this is even possible. I wouldn't have yeah. expected that it would work. Um, okay. Just adding those overloads in. I mean, they'll come in at the top, but that doesn't necessarily mean they get picked. Um, mm -hmm. I think something that Daniel and I have been and talking about a lot the, the past couple of weeks is like, um, this kind of falls into this, um, weird gray zone where it's, uh, you know, people, you know, from the get-go, we're like, okay, we're making a bunch of judgment calls in the standard library. What happens if someone disagrees with that? Um, and we're like, well, people can just write their own version of the built-in library and mm -hmm. decide what mm -hmm. they think json.parse should return. Um, and we did some work a few years back to make it more ergonomic to kind of drop in your own copy of the DTS files. Mm -hmm. um, and so, we, we kind of did that and we're like, cool, we're done. We don't have to think about it anymore because anyone can go and do it. Um, and there's been a lot of different things where uh, it's like, oh yeah, anyone can go and do it. So they will, right? And it's like, it's not field of dreams. If you build it, people won't necessarily come. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so um, I, I was a little surprised that TS Reset actually took this approach of like, just kind of adding these extra overloads into the, to the DTS files. Yeah. Um, when like, you could just take the DTS file as we have it, uh, you know, fork it for our license and push up to npm and say, yeah, no, npm install. Um, you know, total types that total TypeScript slash um, cool lib or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah. And you could drop that in, and uh, TypeScript would just pick that up, and you have to configure it, of course. But uh, we yeah, could just yeah. pick that up and use it. So, um, I mean, it's cool that you don't have to like worry about Thank it. Just, I mean, uh, maybe yeah. this is easier, maybe it's not. Um, but well, this is a, a, better for a maintenance perspective too, because he doesn't have to like. Um, you know, really, if you do that, you kind of have to maintain like a patch on top of what we're doing since we're going and adding all the new yep. APIs as they show up versus like if you just write your own, then then you're in charge of that. I mean, it just kind of sucks to maintain the package JSON when you have to do the mechanism we support. So importing is just a lot easier, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's also split up. So you can just like, just sort of like you just said, Daniel, like if you want to take the, just the JSON parse rules, you can oh, do that. Oh, I see. Um, yeah. So it's like kind of dually packaged, I think. Um, yeah. I mean, is there a future? Oh, some of these are kind of have a, a, a theme, actually. I mean, this is just some of the highlights, but like, I think one of the things that uh, Matt, so I love yeah. Matt, uh, made some videos with Matt. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Total TypeScript is a fantastic uh, thing. Go check it out. A lot of really great learning to happen there. Matt works very hard on these things and is doing a lot for the TypeScript world. 
one of the things that he said motivated him was this kind of nagging thing that happens, which is when you do, uh, uh, what's it, uh, uh, j json.parse, it should return, he would like it to return unknown, but it returns any. Closing the, the, um, the chapter though on, on TS Reset, I wanted to say, I was very, very surprised when TS Reset was, um, when Matt announced it, and when people were to see people talking about it, I'm not on any social media, um, so I don't talk to anyone, but I read what people say sometimes. And everybody did kind of the same shaking their, you know, what's from the Simpsons, old man shaking fist at the sky thing saying, well, Ara, why does JSON.parse return any, you know? And I immediately, like a, like, a, like a lightning bolt, thought back to this issue I had remembered Ryan writing and it took me a long time to come find this because you've written so many things on the TypeScript uh, repo. But basically, uh, if any, this is a uh, two six two two five. I don't. We don't need to go like super into it. But mm -hmm. in this, uh, to me, this made a real impact on me because I remembered it all these years and I've thought back to it a few times. And Ryan, you were basically talking about like you know not every observable behavior of a language should find its way into the TypeScript type system. Um, you also wrote this. Uh, you, you know, you were, you were motivated to write this stack overflow about it, um, mm. and answer it yourself, which I think is like, just so awesome. I have some, so many good things to say about you guys doing stuff like this, but I'm just curious if like, it seems like there's not a lot of awareness. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to meet with you guys and make this video is it seems like there could be more that people could understand about where you guys come from with writing TypeScript, um, is there anything you want to say to people or is there anything that are is comes up in like as you're developing the software about where you draw the line between what's like in and what's out? Well, I've said so much on this topic. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think the, it, it, honestly, uh, Anders is, and I was sort of even talking about this yesterday where he was, Anders was saying, you know, the there's two ways that you can think about soundness and we talk about wanting to be as sound as possible, right? Um, there are the relationships between types, and those relationships can either be sound or unsound. And like read-only example is an example of something that is kind of manifestly unsound. That that assignment from a read-only property to a mutable property is allowed. So like that's an unsoundness that exists in the type system. So let's just kind of set those aside and then talk about unsoundness in the expression space. You can certainly think about um, things that are uh, you, the JavaScript spec defines everything that can happen, right? Sometimes that thing is like throw an exception. And I think most people kind of intuitively understand that like, if you write some code that would cause an exception to be thrown, like, you know, 85 plus percent of the time, you didn't mean to do that, you know, undefined is not a function, right? No one is intentionally saying, what I really want at this point is for the type error, undefined is not a function to appear in my application. Not, not yeah. a good thing, right? That's why you yeah. use type group in the first place. Um, but like, Okay, if that's a, if that is an unsound thing, is like is throw new error unsound? Well, no. Like you obviously did that on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. um, similarly, like if you call parse int and give you've got some user string, um, yep. and that returns nan. Okay, nan's usually bad, right? But like you did that operation to figure out if the thing that the user gave you was a number or not. Conversely, though, if you call math dot sign and pass hello world, well, that returns NAN. Okay, so sometimes you do things that throw exceptions accidentally, and sometimes you do them on purpose. And sometimes you call these functions in the lib that return NAN on purpose, and sometimes you do them accidentally. Um, and I think people, you can look at the ECMAScript spec and say, ah, anything that the spec said is must be intentional because they wrote a spec that must be intentional. But like calling math.sign, with hello world or an array or an object or whatever, those are all on the spec. Those all fall through the, the spec text. And you can walk yourself through and say, ah, that must be intended. But like, it's not intended. It's clearly wrong. Like, you have a bug in your program. You didn't mean to do that. Yep. Um, so we have to figure out what the rules are about what you meant to do and what you didn't mean to do. Um, and it, it just gets kind of weird pretty quickly, I think, because uh, there are a lot of people who are like, oh, that's idiomatic. That's how I wrote write code. And other people are like, no, that should be illegal. Mm -hmm. If you do that at my company, we just walk you out the door that same day. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so there are things that are like clearly in one path and clearly in, and things that are clearly in the other path. And I think mm -hmm. like array dot includes is a really good example of where um, it's really easy to construct examples of array dot includes that are clearly wrong. 
you have an array of strings and you look for a number in it, you've messed up. That's the same as getting the sign of a string. Like you have messed up for sure. Something's wrong with your code. It's also yep. really easy to construct examples where the type system with the expressivity that it has today is not able to detect things that are okay. If you have a string or a number and you look for that in a string array, that's fine. That is like, Daniel did a bunch of work to make a relationship called comparability that expresses this fact that like, if you have two unions and you're doing like triple equals, you don't need subtyping or assignability in the direction. You need a third thing, which is like, do these things plausibly overlap, right? Um, so when we have these things like includes where there's not a way right now for you to say in TypeScript, like I take a value that possibly overlaps this other value. Um, but like, if you had that type, that's the type that you would use for includes. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of get stuck in this situation right now where it's like anytime that the TypeScript the type system lacks the operators to talk about the type that has the behavior you want, you kind of have to pick like um, either the rock or the hard place. Um, we've picked the one that's like, it's, it's, uh, it's, I mean, soundness doesn't make sense, right? Because we're talking about triple equals. Like, it, I don't know, it doesn't, it, it, it's, 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 I don't think it's even a well defined kind of operation to think about. Um, it's, it just feels like this is this is the whole thing about how like you can't pass an unknown to an include like an array of like strings right when it's, you do includes yeah because yeah. like, I mean like so other languages like you know Java C sharp like they I think they do actually say like okay well we take object here right which mm -hmm. is like kind of like their unknown yep yeah and that's okay but i mean i feel like as so many people have run into bugs with that as well right mm -hmm. and so it's yeah. it feels like such a i mean I, I i promise you if we did this people would like as soon as you hit this like why don't you have a more strict type for includes yeah like, give well, me a dash dash strict flag for that right yeah I, it's, it's really funny because like the exact same it's like the argument is running exactly in opposite directions with ts reset where it's like on the one hand json.parse is too lax because it gives me any incentive on no one. On the other hand, right out includes is too strict because I have to like downcast my operate my my parameter or upcast my array. Yep. It's like, well, that's why I say the lib is full of a thousand judgment calls. And like I mm -hmm. think um, you yeah. know, if I had to do includes over again, honestly, I'd pick the current behavior because I think it's more I would rather I think people in general kind of agree with the sentiment that like they would rather type script be too strict than too loose. Yeah, right up until it is too strict in a case where they don't like it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's like very easy to agree with in the principle and then disagree with in the instance. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that said, it's annoying. I get it. Like, it's oh, it feels totally. bad every time you hit it. Um, totally. I was writing so, some code this morning that hit this. I'm like, eh, it's annoying. Um, so I, I actually want to like, wait, let's let's use this example and kind of go, go a little bit farther, right? Mm -hmm. um, the thing that everybody will run into in a language like C Sharp or Java, where they where they have like better guarantees around soundness, much better guarantees around soundness, is that and subtyping and things like that is you want to define an equals method that is going to take the thing that you currently are, right? You don't want to take some random object. If I define an equals on dog, it better take other dogs. Otherwise, I'm probably I've got a logic error, right? Mm -hmm. And so. People, people then say, well, I want a thing that will only guarantee the thing that I'm going to be <laughs> um, yeah. for subtypes as well or something like that, right? And, and so it's, it gets really funky because you really want to catch that bug, right? Um, TypeScript allows you to because it's not sound, but it catches more bugs as a result of, of that behavior, which is really funny um, that you can actually catch more run you can catch more logic errors because you're unsound that mm -hmm. sounds bonkers if you tell someone that but it's actually a very pragmatic sort of thing that we're allowing you to do and express um so i think that that's that's an interesting byproduct of our type system too and some mm -hmm. of the decisions that we made in not i mean libgts is an example where we're able, we, we do do that and we express that but like you can go even further with our type system there too totally